This morning, I had the second shot of the vaccine, and before Bill Gates gets full control over me, I'm going to talk about what's next beyond silicon. What's your minimum specification? Ever wanted to try and roll your own VPN, game server, or other web service for free? Linode makes cloud computing fast, simple, and affordable, allowing you to focus on your projects, not your infrastructure. Try Linode today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techtechpotato. So Beyond Silicon is a common question I seem to get. People were wondering, when is silicon going to run out? When are we going to reach the fundamental limits of silicon? And the thing I have to point out is, even if we do reach the fundamental limits of silicon, silicon will still be in use day to day, every day, for lots and lots of different things. Heck, we're on 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer right now, and lots of the, le lots of the electronics you're using, that I'm using, still rely on 90 nanometer, 180 nanometer, very old technology for some of those designs. So one of the drivers in that field of the market, if we're looking beyond silicon, is to plastics and flexible electronics. Now, we've seen flexible electronics in the context of, say, flexible displays, LG or Samsung or whoever's been presenting those at a lot of industry conferences recently, and they're actually now on sale. But going from something like a display to electronics is a bit of a jump. Now, flexible electronics have actually been around a while. We've seen simple uh, just moving of uh, current and voltage through very basic ink printed plastic that's been you know fairly simple for home users to get to grips with. If you're going something more complex, then we've seen, say, adders being implemented in plastic by using a sort of conductible ink on top of the plastic. Now, the announcement today is from ARM, and they've actually implemented a full processor in plastic. Now, this is really, really important, because it means that if we can implement processors in plastic, then everyday items that we use might be able to have processors in them. So think about food packaging. If it's connected with a sensor, it can tell you if the food inside the package has spoiled, if there's a leak, if the lid isn't on properly. If we look into, say, medical packaging, it could tell whether something may be sterile or not. And then we go on to, say, clothing. We could argue, say, implement trackers or implement something a bit more smarter inside clothing. There are a lot of possibilities that are probably not even thought of right now as where to put processors into plastic. And the announcement today from ARM is that with uh, Pragmatic, a uh, company that they've partnered with, they've been able to design one of their microcontrollers into a full plastic uh, design and a flexible plastic design at that. So for those of you who don't know ARM's processor technology, they have three lines, M for microcontrollers, R for real-time processors, and A for advanced processors. The stuff that runs on your smartphone is very likely going to be in the A category. That's where all the high performance, high frequency, high power stuff is. Then you have R, which is to do with real time. That's where you need instructions to occur at a very specific determined pace. And we see that in time critical applications such as monitoring and automotive. At the bottom end is M, microcontrollers. These are like CPUs, but with limited memory and limited action. The microcontroller that ARM has implemented in plastic is the M0 microcontroller, which only has 56 instructions. Now, imagine biggest x86 processors have to deal with 4,000 plus instructions, maybe more. Uh, I don't think even Intel knows them all. But the point is, with these microcontrollers, you can do very simple operations to help manage whatever you're controlling. So that's simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, we're doing bit shifts, we're doing perhaps monitoring. This processor even has onboard RAM, 128 bytes of it, and ROM, about 456 bytes. And it's implemented in this sort of plastic um, polyimide. It's actually, they build it as if it's a wafer of silicon. They, they use photolithography tools to deposit metals, deposit actually non-silicon metals, metal oxides, and build up layers of um, plastics and metals to build the processor inside. Uh, I believe in the paper at Nature, it says they have 13 material layers, but only four metal layers for all the routing, because 
uh, you can't just lay out planar transistors. They do have to go over one another for the connections. Now, this project, according to ARM, actually started way back in 2013. And in 2015, they're actually showing off initial prototypes. And the reason why they haven't been able to produce a microcontroller, a fully working microcontroller since then, is because the fabrication technology hasn't been up to it, but also the design technology hasn't been up to it. So at that time, they were showcasing, say, shift registers and ring oscillators. But a processor is much more than that. You've got the front end, you've got branch predictors, uh, you've got buffers, you've got schedulers. This M0 is, a, um, is an in-order two-stage pipeline design. And you also got to deal with the back end and how the memory is supported as well. All of that requires functional blocks. And part of the research into this process is essentially being able to design those functional blocks inside plastic. Now, apparently the project went a little bit um, kind of in the background for a few years while the partner Pragmatic was dealing with other projects at the time. Though through those other projects, they've been able to build up these series of essentially cell libraries and blocks in order to be able to now build an M0 processor. And uh, I believe the announcement says that this was actually achieved October last year. And they're looking into the future of plastic processors beyond that. Now for scale, a standard M0 uh, core, if you build it on, say, a 90 nanometer process, it takes up 0.4 square millimeters. This M0 processor in plastic was about 60 square millimeters, which is what a 1500x size increase. You're massively blowing it out here. I think Arm said they were using the equivalent of an 800 nanometer process node technology to get it to work. And actually, one of the issues with this technology is designing the resistors. So if you pick up a standard processor, so this is uh, one an Intel old processor, actually. And on the back, you've got resistors on the back to help deal with power. One of the problems with plastic design is you don't want to be able to have to add any of those other physical components. So they had to design resistors with this technology. And part of that is actually researching the new materials, higher resistive materials that can be deposited in plastic in this sort of thin film transistor layout. So the die size is quite big, and as you imagine, the power is also a lot higher. Um, however, even with this, uh, you know, 60 square millimeter die size, the M0 power consumption as rated was only 21 milliwatts. Arm said that's mostly static power. So even if you're actively using the core, that 21 milliwatts doesn't actually change that much. They said it's 99% static power, only 1% dynamic. The other aspect is frequency. I looked up some numbers for a standard silicon Cortex M0. And uh, on a 180 nanometer ultra low leakage TSMC process, so one that's not even optimized for frequency, you can get about 50 megahertz out of a Cortex M0. This processor was only running about 20 to 30 kilohertz, which is an order of magnitude lower. Uh, so these processors aren't fast. Uh, they consume a lot more power than the silicon counterparts. The die size is a lot bigger, but they're in plastic. And apparently at scale, this uh, process technology, the design manufacturing methodology, is several orders of magnitude cheaper than silicon. So one day we may be able to see, you know, sub one cent plastic M0 processors in any number of things in the next few years. Looking through the research paper, Arm says that they can see, you know, practically this sort of technology could scale another couple of orders of magnitude in complexity and, you know, equivalent transistor count though a lot of research will have to be put into it. Uh, they did say that at perhaps, say, the equivalent of 1 million transistor uh, technology, that's where they perhaps see the limit of this technology if we scale it out over a couple of decades. So we're not going to necessarily get the next computer processor, the next uh, core design, the next smartphone processor based on plastic, though we might get see some sort of smart inference, uh, smart technology coming to everyday items where we don't normally consider smart technology to be. So what's my minimum specification here? I would love to actually get my hands on one of these and uh, see how it works. Uh, I believe they said that, you know, the bend is actually quite substantial. Uh, so let's have a look at that. We've seen uh, concept ideas of, you know, bendable smart watches. That actually relies on having a bendable display. And then the electronics are kind of like fixed, but joined around inside the PCB. So imagine turning some of that also into flexible technology. That sounds pretty cool.